Be, being a content creator and being an idiot, they don't really go hand in hand. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> I've been trying for a little while to get Seth's attention. The Saffron God had long been the object of my affections, and some of my attempts to get noticed were somewhat subtler than others. Others were a bit more direct. Dear Saffron Olive, Now I'm not saying we should elope, not at all, but if you'll have me, I'll happily bathe you in the softest milk. Dab dry you with the jankiest cards and kissed your soft thighs with the tender touch of my lips. Just don't tell Wedge. I'm shamelessly flirting with him on Twitter a lot at the moment and I don't want to scare him off, you know? I'm sure you know how it is. But all it took was one passive aggressive YouTube comment with over 350 likes to get his attention. Although I am glad that Damon Stover was there to sit me down and make me humble. Pleasant Kenobi, not everyone knows who you are, and this isn't your build. There is no stuffy doll. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Your words, they cut me, Damon. They cut me. So finally it is here, Senpai and the Kenobi, a story for the ages, a battle of the brewers. Oh, what could we call it? What, brew... brewers battle? Brew off? Jink off? <laughs> Whatever you think will work best for your analytics, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, jink off sounds kind of bad. We might have to avoid that one. It sounds a bit saucy, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, just a little. Yes. You can use that one on your channel, but I probably can't get away with that. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the jank off, where I plan to jank Seth off. Or be janked off. Jank me harder, daddy. But before we get into it, look at Dex and some gameplay, a quick nod to some notable people out there. First of all, thanks to Seth and MTG Goldfish for getting involved with a little British content creator like myself, even if I am the UK's number one. We the best. Magic. Secondly, the sponsors, Cape Fear Games and MTGO Traders. Traders is a seller that you can actually click on to buy your decks from through MTG Goldfish, and they are cheaper than Cardholder, and that's a fact. And lastly, a big shout out to the patrons, you guys are keeping the lights on. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, follow the link in the description below to join and throw me a couple of bucks. It gives me more money than any ad revenue from your views ever would, and it gives you access to our friendly Discord servers where we brew and chat shit. Join the cult. Anyway, for some context, let's roll on intro, and I'll provide a unique play-by-play -play as we get into the games after Seth has explained what we're doing. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we got a super special video today. So we are doing a brew off, and today I'm joined by Pleasant Kenobi. What's up, Pleasant Kenobi? Hello Seth, thanks for having me on. Um, not a lot's off, but it's midday here in the UK, or late midday, should I say. Wait, it's nice and early over your end, isn't it? Early in the morning, not that early, it's like 10 something. So perfect time to record a brewer's battle. So the plan for today is pretty simple. We each got a card a week ago. You probably saw the video that was posted of the card selection. We threw a bunch of cards in, got one at random. So we each build a deck around that card and now it's time to actually battle them and see who will take down this very janky brewer's battle. So why don't you tell me what you're playing today? So I'm gonna click yes on the play first because we'll see my hand at home on the other side of things. I am playing uh, Mono Blue <laughs> to Fairy's Puzzle Box. Uh, that should uh, should be interesting. I'm trying to figure out what combos with Teferi's Puzzle Box in Mono Blue. I was thinking, the first thing I thought of was uh, like Underworld Dreams or Notion Thief or something like that. So I'm very curious to see how Mono Blue works. Yeah, yeah they, they would. So I, I put out uh, to my patrons to say, come on, guys, that, what would you like to see me play? And um, one of them made a mono black rack uh, deck with Underworld Dreams. Um, Notion Thief was the first thing that everyone shouted about as well. I'm not strictly mono blue, I'm almost mono blue. There are four cards in my deck that are not blue or aren't completely mono blue. So I am fibbing a little bit. So, But I don't want to tell you too much. I want you to see the spice when it happens. <laughs> All right, well, I'm excited to see it work. On my side of the table, I got Bizarre Trader, which is <laughs> this weird uh, donating goblin. Uh, I didn't realize at first that Bizarre Trader can't actually give players enchantments. For some reason, it's only artifacts, creatures, or lands it can give to the other player. So my first take on the deck was like Demonic Pact or something like that, but that doesn't really work. So I had to go really deep with, the, with what I'm trying to donate, and it's a very risky plan, but it should be interesting to see if it can actually work. I guess the reason it can't donate enchantments is because of the color pie. Red isn't allowed to inter interact with enchantments at all, is it? It does make sense. I, I guess that is on flavor for red. Although, Harmless Offering can donate anything, and that's red now, so maybe it's changing a little bit? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Rosewater will say he regrets printing Harmless Offering on his, on his Tumblr blog next year. On his deathbed, that'll be his <laughs> biggest regret. I shouldn't have printed Harmless Offering. Karagawa, Storm, and Harmless <laughs> Offering. <laughs> 
with that intro done, let's get down into it. I leave with the basic island looking to hide information with regards to our micro splash for as long as possible. However, that isn't going to work for all that long as Seth leads with a shocked overgrown tomb into Thoughtseize. Top tier staples. I do have Thoughtseize though, so oh. I get to get a quick peek at what this deck is all about. Okay, I'm just gonna let that resolve. <laughs> So do we take the good card, search for his Kanta, or do we take the <laughs> more piece, J Jace's Eraser? Uh, I'm... Now, Seth has a fun habit of mispronouncing cards. Here we have Jace's Eraser, which should be Jace's Erasure, which Jace used to use in high school to rob out his incorrect maths homework. Or it might be a version of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie for the noughties, but instead of Arnie, we've got Jace running around erasing people. Seth perhaps seals his own fate and takes the search for his counter with the Thoughtseize. Will he live to regret this decision? It will be embarrassing in 20 turns when I get milled out by Jace's Eraser. We opt into another opt, but with different artwork because I'm a scrub. We cast our first Erasure whilst he is tapped out and passed the turn. A swamp from Seth, but no, two drop. The mill begins as we draw our first card for the turn. We opt into another Erasure and then cast our second Erasure, which is multiple Erasures. It's a hard word to say over and over. Erasure, 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 Erasure. All we need is a puzzle box and we are off to the races. Seth draws some cards off of Knight's Whisper and Thought seizes our beloved Crypt Command into the bin, which is pretty sad as this was our insurance of policy against any bizarre trader shenanigans. Simply not letting them resolve is our best course of action. We mill again off of our natural draw and see harmless offering which must be the redundant copies of bizarre trader in his combo we also see a nihil spell bomb main board which might just clarify what bizarre trader combo or plan seth is on i suspected immortal coil coming into this game but this all but confirms it seth you crafty fuck we're on to you. However, the suspense and mystery is soon put to bed as Seth slams an immortal coil into play, which weirdly plays like a one-sided card of arch engine thanks to the fodder we are putting into his graveyard with our mill plan. Balls. But then suddenly, as if by magic, Teferi's puzzle box materialises on our top deck and we draw it. We now have the majority of our combo on line two. Seth draws a card off a coil and in his draw step he puts six cards on the bottom of his library and draws six more thanks to the puzzle box. This could be a blessing or it could be a curse as it might shuffle away combo pieces, but could also draw him into more combo pieces. He plays a near hill spell bomb, which is part two of his three card combo. If you can exile our graveyard, then gift us the coil via harmless offering or bizarre trader, we are simply dead. We continue to not interact with each other as we try to goldfish our way to combo victory with terrible magic cards, much as Richard Garfield intended when he first created magic. We draw for a turn a snap custom age. With our Zephyrus puzzle box trigger on the stack, we cast the snap custom age to flashback up to get maximum draw triggers on our evasion before we put the card in the bottom of our library and draw some more. We see Notion Thief on top of our library which feels bad with the fact that we we're about to put it onto the bottom of our library anyway so we just put it on the bottom with the scry. We mill Seth for 8 this turn, we see a Liliana of the Veil hit his bin which makes us feel pretty scared, he's basically playing Jund here but with bizarre traders and mortal coils and no green. It's hardly even jank at this point, it feels top tier. Uh, Kinda. Seth untaps, loops his hand to the bottom of his deck and draws some cards, not before terminating our port snappy before the trigger resolves. We remand his Inquisition, draw a card and mill Seth for two. He sees two lands and gets nothing with the Inquisition. He also points out that the terminate means he tapped his red source and only drew a tapped red source and therefore he cannot play his two drop bizarre trader that he's drawn. Get him. Once again, we opt in response to the puzzle box trigger in order to mill for more cards this turn. Puzzle box turns three islands into Jace the Mind Sculptor, Sphinx of Revelation and another island which feels like absolute pure gas. This is the best. Jace allows me to put cards on top of my library that I know I'll draw next turn and trigger my erasures three times. Jace essentially begins to machine gun Seth's deck to pieces. Daka, 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 as the orcs would say. Left of 10 cards in his library, desperately looking for a way to kill me or my combo, Seth digs deeper with his coils. Before the kill, Seth looks for information with Thought Seize and decides that he would rather not give me the satisfaction of winning and instead commits Immortals Coil, Spell Bomb, Seppuku, honorable suicide in the face of a jankier combo opponent. I respect that, Senpai. And now, some sideboarding shop talk with Pleasant Kenobi and Saffron Olive. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, uh, so, that was that was pretty scary and pretty impressive. I, I mean, it, it was slow for sure, definitely, definitely. But it was okay. That was okay. I mean, if I wasn't so scared of you playing Blood Moon, I could have not. I could have perhaps played more Black Interaction early on, like Hand Interaction. But what I found when I tested the Black version with Underworld Dreams is that I don't want to thought seize you if I'm trying to Underworld Dreams to ferry you because you don't have any cards in hand. It just kills you too slowly. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Well, I guess oh, creature boy. removal doesn't look too good. Or do I sideboard Absolutely. into a play set of uh, Night Vale Spectres and Notion Thieves now? 
Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that would get me. I do have some ways to disrupt your pieces, thankfully. So this might get better. And I got my, my sweet sideboard tech. Close. I have to say, like... Sweet that sideboard was tech. That was closer than it looked, I think. If I had gotten down a Bizarre oh, Trader, 100%. I had my pieces. Like, if you hadn't terminated, you could have played that Bizarre Trader, and I would have had to have drawn into action with it. Luckily, I drew into Jace, so I could have bounced it, I guess. But, um, yeah, if I hadn't drawn Jace or any of my other bounce spells, I would have just died. Yeah, it was, it was closer than it looked. Goldfish yeah, matches are weird like 100%. that, because you can't actually, uh, actually... It's not the same as, like, creature matchups, where you can look at the life total and be like, oh, this person's ahead. We were both just kind of comboing and racing. Kind of interesting. Uh... I board this. I gotta cut two cards. I think you should cut the immortal coils. They're not very good. Actually, way better than I thought they would be. Since <laughs> they seem great in this for me. So the first time I tested this match, right, I, 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 I um, I went blue source opt past turn, and my opponent uh, plays a neonate and puts like five cards in his bin and dredges, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, this doesn't seem good. In game two, I keep a hand with the best two mana enchantment in modern. Jace's Erasure. I also have Search for Jace in my hand and Sphinx's Tutelage, which is pretty good. So the hand is just gas. Seth leads with a combo piece on turn one, which is kind of scary. We draw an opt to keep the mana up for opting in his turn. Seth goes digging with the spell bomb and he doesn't find a second land, which to me screams that he must have the combo in his hand to have kept such a, a, a wonky hand. We cast a turn to Eraser because it's our route to victory. Seth learns from previous mistakes and thoughts is aware of Tutelage. Boo. Hiss. We resolve on our counter onto the board, but only after briefly considering holding up Disallow to either catch a two mana threat like Bizarre Trader or to really get there by stifling a fetch land if you drew one. I decided that developing my board makes more sense and I play the search. Seth resolves a scary looking Bizarre Trader. We play a land and keep mana up for counter magic because we just can't let him kill us out of nowhere. Coil costs four, so we have a turn or two before that happens. A draw spell comes from Seth and we decide to punish his land light hand by countering the draw spell to avoid him drawing more lands. Bizarre Trader comes a rather hostile seller and begins to dish out the beat down. 20 turn clock is a 20 turn clock at the end of the day. Search for his counter finds us a cryptic command which feels really good here, all the while we slowly mill Seth to death. Seth attempts to resolve another part of his combo that hurts our Snapcaster Mages 2 in another Mihil spell bomb. So we decide to counter the bomb and bounce the trader. With no second land, Seth can't replay the trader, but he has a second spell bomb in hand. However, he is fearful that he can't crack it as he needs it to be able to combo and he's running out of spell bombs to use. Although, I don't think I can crack this one because I need it to combo eventually, so. <laughs> How many are you playing? Three or four? Um... Herba, so I have one more on top of this one. This sounds good to me. We pass with Snap Custom Agent to Salam Manor up available. We're basically playing Drawgo at this point, but the spell bomb could counter this with a snappy trigger on the stack. Seth casts Knight's Whisper, to which we opt all to look for actual counter magic that doesn't involve the graveyard, but instead we find Emo Jace, who we keep because it's pretty good here to only have it promptly thought seized away. Oh, like this video if you cry every time. Poor JC boy. Our next opt finds a Notion Thief while Search finds us a polluted delta to be able to cast it because blue card selection is just so fucking good. We attack with Snappy and get ready to lock Seth out if we can draw a puzzle box. Seth casts a Liliana of the Veil, killing my Snapcaster Wizard. We cast a Notion Thief in his end step and Seth doesn't sound best pleased about this. Oh no. Oh yes. That's, that's not ideal. We attack and kill Lily and remand his duress, putting stress on his mana. Seth decides instead of recasting the duress to go for Trader instead, and I get a cryptic command which is freshly drawn off of the remand. We draw the puzzle box and we count the spell, which is literally our best draw here as it allows us to lock Seth out of the game with Notion Thief. We play the puzzle box and pass back and Seth draws a card, puts the rest of his hand on the bottom of the cup deck and tries to draw again, but Thief steals the draws from him. How the Thief puzzle box interaction works is that you get to draw at least one card a turn, so if you draw instant speed interaction, like Fatal Push or Terminate or Bolt, any of those cards can be cast, but it looks like Seth didn't, and we get there. Each card drawn triggers Jason Razor, and we pew pew pew, and we pew pew pew, and we pew 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 with a card for the top for each card drawn. Our flip search for his counter gets activated and finds a spell snail which we put into our hand to maximize the number of cards we're drawing every turn. We untap and trigger puzzle box and we put so many triggers on the stack. We play another Jace to Erasure, cast a Jace to Mind Sculptor, to Jace Storm, and mill him for approximately 1 million. I feel like at this point I'm having my cake and I am eating it. We add insult to injury with the lock by bouncing his near health spell bomb with Psychonic Rift and his end step. This isn't bad manners guys, this is just banter and efficient play. 
honest. We then begin to bounce his lands of cryptic commands because mercy is for the fucking weak. So many triggers. No way to all stack them though on the same opponent because MTGO is a mess. <laughs> Too many triggers and ah, I this think is that's the enough. Kind, this is the kind of magic that I like to play. Can I control click it? Is that how it works? Put all in one player, like the storm. Shift click, does that work? Alt click, does no, that work? I, I'm not sure there's a way to do oh, it. Sadness. We slam a Witchbrain Orb, use Jace to look at Seth's empty library, and then win as Seth draws a card. G G E R A C. We actually spent a bit of time discussing brewing and some of the effect that we had on these particular cards, uh, which I'll let you guys have a listen to now. That was a comprehensive uh, game of magic, I think. That was fun for me. Impressive. That was a pretty impressive <laughs> showing for your deck, I have to say. So I'm not, I'm not even really too disappointed. I knew, <laughs> I figured Bizarre Trader was kind of a pretty long shot, and I think your deck was super cool. I'm super impressed with how it turned out. So yeah, even though I yeah. kind of got crushed, it was still pretty sweet. I to think see. you got the, the the short straw for definite, right? Like Teferi's Puzzle Box, like you said, does have some applications where you can like lock people and do some slightly degenerate things, even though it is difficult to pull off. Where Bizarre Trader is a very big stretch to get anywhere with it. Yeah, I think what I found with Bizarre Trader is it doesn't, ideally it would donate anything like Harmless Offering, and then you could build like a super sweet Harmless Offering uh, deck with Bizarre Trader to be like redundant combo pieces. Yeah, but yeah. the problem I ran into is with Bizarre Trader, the only thing I could find that was really just literally game winning was a Mortal Coil. Yeah. And then you need multiple combo pieces because you got to be able to exile the graveyard to make it work. And you don't really have... Uh, like your deck, you have Jace's Eraser, you also have Sphinx's Tutelage, so you have some amount of redundancy, plus Teferi's Puzzle Box is pretty sweet for finding it. Uh, there's only four copies of Immortal Coil, so I was running like Dark Petition to try to find them, but just didn't quite put it all together. I mean, is there, is there no other artifact? Are there like weird Lich's Mirrors or anything like that? Like some sort of Lich thing? Other artifacts, but none of them... <laughs> directly win the game they're like lich's tomb for example makes it so you don't lose the game but then you have to sacrifice per, uh, sacrifice permanence when you lose life so there's other artifacts that are like disruptive but right. nothing that literally just wins the game to the extent that immortal coil does so my backup plan was abyssal persecutor which right, right. gave so me a creature to be found, and then I figured if things went really badly, I could always try to donate it to you so you wouldn't be able to win the game, right. and maybe buy sense. me time to find the Immortal Coil. So it's not an ideal backup way of winning the game, but it is something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, because you're because you're so limited, of course, there's no decent artifacts that you have to give creatures. But then again, there's not really that many creatures with enough of a downside that it really... It's worth donating them. Well, if they do, they're normally seven or eight mana demons. So getting them to play in the first place is just too difficult. Yeah, that was part of the problem. You'd have to go like reanimator or something, maybe to get them into play. <laughs> Bizarre trader reanimator. What what a hot mess that would be. <laughs> when I was talking to people, like bronze bombshell was another option. Yeah, that's what someone else said in my Discord. Actually, I can't remember who said it. He said the bronze bombshell incoming and J Jade Jade Choker and those sort of things. How am I found with that plan? And I did look into it. There was kind of two problems with that, and one is. Uh, one is a lot of the cards donated themselves without Bizarre Trader, so it felt less like a... You have, like, what's the one-drop black thing that donates itself and then deals damage each turn? You mentioned Jinx Choker. Uh, sleeper Agent is the, is the black one-drop. Yeah, agent. Sleeper Agent. So th they donate themselves without Bizarre Trader, so it felt less like Bizarre Trader was the focus of the deck, and they were just... It was just kind of, like, there. Because the other, and the other way thing, to go was Act of Treason, wasn't it? That was the other way to go? Act of Treason... Or, yes, would be or you another steal my stuff and gain them permanently. But the problem is, again, if I'm creatureless, which I kind of was. Problem is, it would have been very hard to steal your stuff. And I guess you could have went. I guess it wouldn't even be active treason. That would have just been so matchup dependent. That's a deck that people ask me about all the time for standard. Is because there's like Hazarets. Oh man, yeah, rage yeah. or something. And then and there's captain, that's captivating like crew that. as well. There is quite a few effects like it in standard. Because like, I was really it's, scared. I play a notion thief and you'd steal it, donate it to yourself, and then I'd be like, oh, I've locked myself out of the game. That was one of my fears when I was building the deck. I was really afraid that, and it kind of happened. But I was afraid if I went that direction, that you would just be playing a deck without many creatures, and then my deck would just kind of 
literally do nothing <laughs> if I just had all these active treasons and you were just playing Jaces and enchantments and artifacts and I'm like, ugh. So again, so, if, if you'd played, like, I don't know why you would, but one random Eldrazi in your deck or if you'd played on Burial Rites, that could have gone, like, horribly, horribly wrong as well. I guess in some ways it did, didn't it? It fed, it fed your Mortal Coils, didn't it? It did. It was beneficial until it ended up killing me, especially in Game 1 with Immortal Coil. But I intentionally tried to stay away from metagaming too much. I thought yeah, it would be kind of yeah. unfun if I just... I, if I knew you were playing Teferi's Puzzle Box, you could run just, like, main deck Ancient Grudges and stuff and be like, ah, I gotcha, but that's not, I don't know. I yeah, think that no, takes I away agree, from the sportsmanship and fun of it a little bit. Because, like, originally my plan was to have boomerang effects in my deck, literal boomerang. For A, it allowed me to bounce your lands to hand on the Teferi trigger so it shuffles the lands back in. But then I realized, actually, they're just going to draw lands anyway, so that doesn't do anything. But then I was like, oh, I guess I can bounce things he donates to me. But then in the end, the cards aren't actually that good, and that is really metagaming. So I had cards like Cryptic that could kind of do it. But yeah, I wasn't going to main board like, all the balance effects for that reason. So what other uh, what other builds did you consider? We kind of talked about my stuff. Um, you mentioned Underworld Dreams for a brief while you thought of, going more black. Um, so this is what I just played. I'll send you the deck file, obviously. Um, I had the Witchbane Orb and the Orbs of Warning in the sideboard to give us options to were for... Makes sense. Um, against you. So, this, so, this, so the original version was this one, Mono Blue, where I was playing the boomerangs and things. Didn't like it. Thought it wasn't very good. Oh, random Consecrated Sphinx as well, by the way. <laughs> you can't go wrong with the Consecrated Sphinx. <laughs> that, was, that had main boards. This is when I was like, you know, should I met a game? Should I not? And in the end, I didn't because I just thought, you know, it was just bad in certain circumstances. Then there was Mono Black. Which is the one that you were expecting, wasn't it? Uh, Underworld Dreams was the first card I thought of, so I wasn't sure if it'd be mono black, but that would seem like the most obvious combo. Yeah, so I just go pushes and hand interaction, uh, a two drop life linker, and some sun and bloods, arenas, dismembers, Underworld Dreams, spiteful vision, which is kind of another version of Underworld Dreams, the puzzle box, obliterate is because I'm in mono black, so I might as well, and a couple of grey merchants to gain the life back. I'll put, end up hurting myself quite a bit as well, I'd imagine. So there's a black version, and then we made this red version, me and John, from my channel, but we realised that Molten Psyche isn't an instant after the first oh, game. Oh, yeah. So I, so my opponent, I literally got to puzzle box him, so he like, drew like six cards in his turn, <laughs> and then I went to cast Molten Psyche, so I can't. It's sorcery. <laughs> so that was really <laughs> awkward. So that that is literally a number. But my plan was, like, Greater Gargoyle allows me to like finish you off. But it also allowed me to sack things you didn't good tech. And plus you just like suspend it on turn one and then in, you're not worried about your finisher getting puzzle boxed away, really. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that, that was an idea, but that was Howling Minds. But then whenever this didn't quite work, I'd have to go more in on this card. And I thought, oh, you know what, no. Just scrap that deck off and move to... And then, yeah, that's when Mono Blue and then the Black Splash that I did for one game and then came on the video and was like, oh, I've changed my deck, let's go. I think you ended up in a pretty good spot. I think the uh, all the builds look super cool, but the blue-black one, I really like the Notion Thieves. I mean, I didn't like them during our gameplay, but <laughs> <laughs> they look really sweet and they were pretty effective. Well, I, I, I don't think I've ever looked at Notion Thieves someone outside of Cube, so that, that was nice, <laughs> that was good. I mean, yeah, Notion Thief plus Buzzer Box for a lock was very good. Yeah, that felt strong, that felt strong. I've got my Jace Tribal as well. I, I almost played Teferi's just for the, the flavour. But then the new Teferi puts a card, three cards deep into your library, and then Puzzle Box just draws you into it, so that's kind oh, of a bit of a number. Another colour, and then in Blood Moons, all of a sudden might be relevant. Yeah. So I think Notion Thief is strictly better than Teferi. Outside of deck. our super janky meta, how much success do you think, like, if you... I don't know, play a league with this or something, is this deck anywhere near being even... <laughs> I, I think I'll probably end up in a, somewhere like a 1-4, perhaps. I think I think realistically, I need to not be so scared of Blood Moon. I was scared of Blood Moon because of you, because you're so in love with that card. And, um, yeah, you need to splash black more directly and play like early interaction, like removal and seems, disruption. That seems like a smart plan. To bring uh, bring in the thought seizes and so forth would give you a better shot. Yeah, I've... yeah, definitely. I mean, that was so much fun that I kind of want to do that now, so maybe that's a video I'll make in a couple of weeks' time, because the Notion Thief lock was uh, very fun. Fun, and for I, me. Think people, I think people would like to see more of it, because it's, it's a really cool combo. And for my deck, as far as actually 
playing it somewhere. You pick up free wins from the graveyard hate. Just some decks having four main deck Nile spell bombs, you just win no matter what against like Dredge or something. It's really good. But as far as beating people yeah. barely, it takes it takes a lot. I played in one of my test matchups against Eggs, which is a pretty uh, a pretty graveyard <laughs> heavy deck, and I still didn't end up winning. Like I just could not find my combo pieces in time. So it's just really inconsistent. And then they kill your Notion Thief or, or not your Notion Thief, your Bizarre Trader because it dies to literally everything, and uh it's a mess. I guess that's another problem with the color combination that you ended up with. Like, I mean, I don't think there's much better you can do with it, but in red-black, you don't really have the card selection. There's not really any tutors for the things you need either. So, you, like, at least I was drawing a lot of cards so I could find the parts I needed more consistently, but you can't really do yeah, that. Yeah, so I was going with... Uh, I had the Knight's Whispers. I had three Knight's Whispers just to kind of churn through the deck, and then two uh, Demonic Packs, because I figured with all my cheap spells, I'd probably have Spell Master... Or not Demonic Pack, uh, Demonic Petition. Right. I'd have Spell Master in yeah, here, and yeah. then kind of could just tutor up like if i had one additional red source i could tutor up maybe the harmless offering and be able to cast it right away or a, a bizarre trader or something or it's pretty good with uh the immortal coil because it's only one extra mana so you're spending six mana and you put it right into play so that was kind of my attempt to make it happen but it's it's still kind of slow and clunky i always try to play dark yeah. in modern and i never actually make it make it good but yeah sometimes you're i so love desperate. i love the card you just gotta you gotta go yeah, for it anyway it upsets me that it only sees play in like storm decks in uh, the older formats because start positions oh i guess in edh as well the card is really cool but um yeah I i'm pretty happy with how that went i, I do feel bad for you because you got the, you got the, the harsher end of the stick uh, well so congratulations like... to you because the deck looks sweet and it was definitely a fun game and that's i mean i had fun even though you were beating <laughs> me down it was still a lot of fun to play as you can see, I was the victor because I deserve it and I'm best with a sweet and janky mono blue puzzle box control list. If you want to see this this bit through its paces with a league or something, I want to suggest some refinements or ways to make the deck more competitive in the modern environment in general, then please sound off in the comment section below and let me know. If you want to see the whole game, including all banter and all the chat, check out the other side of this video over on Seth's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash MTG Goldfish. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But remember that I stream every Monday night at 7pm BST, so come hang out with your jank out one love oh and also give me money on patreon thanks bye